The more that I learn about heaven, the more that I understand what a wonderful place it will be. In heaven, the angels continually sing, proclaiming the holiness of God. The New Jerusalem is described in the Bible as being a place made of gold, precious stones, and pearls. And there's no need for a sun there because the glory of God is so bright that He gives light to everything. In fact, there won't even be a night at all, and we won't need to sleep because we'll never get tired. But you need to understand that heaven is also a place where no impurity exists, no shame, there's no deceit. And on top of that, all pain and suffering and tears are completely gone. Revelation 21, four says, and he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and there will no longer be any death. There will no longer be any mourning or crying or pain. The first things have passed away. The first things have passed away. You and I will be able to look back and say, I walked through hard times, but now I'm walking on streets of gold. Yes, the pain of life weighed me down, but it does not affect me anymore. It's true that the sufferings I endured for the sake of Christ were not easy, but now I can see that they were worth it. It was all worth it. But the greatest part of heaven, better than anything I've mentioned yet, is the fact that God himself resides there. At the Father's right hand sits the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ. Heaven is a place where we will constantly be experiencing God's presence and will be constantly in awe of God's goodness. Psalm 1611 says, In your presence is fullness of joy. In your right hand there are pleasures forever. God is eternal, so it's going to take you and I all of eternity to fully understand and know Him. Not only is God eternal, but 1 John 4, 8 also tells us that He is love. And that means that for all of eternity, we're going to be filled with joy because of His amazing love. We see this stated in Ephesians 3, 19 when it tells us that the love of Christ surpasses knowledge. That means that despite what you might think, you haven't come to the end of it yet. You will keep searching out his love for all of eternity and you'll never come to the end of it. And so what does that mean for us today? It means keep pressing in to know him. Because one day you're going to look back and you're going to say, my heart is no longer hurting. It's been healed by his love. Psalm 147.3 says he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. What's amazing is that the more you and I press in to know him here on earth, the more that we'll find healing right here and right now. God says in Malachi 4.2, but for you who fear my name, the son of righteousness will rise with healing in its wings. Heaven will be incredible in so many ways, but you need to understand that the grace of God doesn't take effect when we get there. His grace is already working. God poured his love out for all of humankind when his son Jesus died on the cross. And if you've accepted his grace, then you have the opportunity to live in the peace and joy and love of Jesus Christ right now. And that is made possible to us through the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. What I'm trying to say is you don't have to wait for heaven. Acts 10, 38 says, you know Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power and how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. Some people say I could be healed or I could be set free or I could find answers if Jesus were here in person, right? We've probably all had that thought at one point. Jesus is going to be waiting for us when we walk through those heavenly gates, but the truth that we sometimes miss is that we don't have to wait until we get to heaven to talk with him. Jesus makes this amazing promise to believers in Matthew 28, 20, when he says, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So if he's sitting at the right hand of God, how could he make this promise? It's simple. He sent us his spirit. You can ask the Holy Spirit for healing in your heart, in your mind, in your soul, in your body, right now, today. You can ask the Holy Spirit for peace right now. You can ask him for power today. See, when we're hearing his gentle, comforting voice, 
He's going to personally remind us that it's worth it. Keep walking in faith. It's going to be worth it. When we're walking close to him, it's almost like we can touch heaven. And when we hear his voice, despite our current struggle, we can confidently say, I believe you. I choose to believe. And and I know that when I get to heaven, I'm going to be able to look back and say, you were right, Lord. You were right. It was worth it. I'm sorry for the times I doubted you. I'm sorry for the times I went my own way. I should have done it your way every time because I see now that you were worth it, Lord. Heaven sure does sound like a wonderful place to me. But the more I think about it, the more I realize what a tragedy it is too. Because though heaven is so wonderful and and being ushered into the throne room of God will be so indescribable, it's a tragedy right now that not all of us will go there. The Bible says that heaven is a place only for those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. And that means that some of the people that I know won't be there. And some of the people you know won't be there. 1 Peter 4.14 says, If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. One question I want to leave you with today is, does the spirit of God rest on you? Have you truly met him? And I'm not saying this to bring shame or condemnation on you if you know Christ. What I'm saying is, if you're not sure that you know him, don't wait. If you know that you haven't experienced his forgiveness and grace, don't put it off Please be sure, you can be sure today that heaven is your destination. Romans 10, 13 says, For whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. So if you're listening to my voice today and you know that this is what you need, pray with me. Say, Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe you lived a perfect life and you died on the cross to receive the punishment for my sin. You took my punishment and I want to thank you. Your word says believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. So I choose to believe in you right now. I need saving God and you are the only person who can possibly save me. Save me Lord Jesus. Forgive me of my sins. Make me a new person. Introduce me to your Holy Spirit. I don't want to just know more about you, God. I really want to know you. I need to know you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.